Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be ch testing a set of uh, eFest uh, batteries, 18650 batteries from or cells from uh, China. They claim to have a 3000 milliamp hour storage capability as you can see here on the screen. Let me uh, get a nice picture there. There we go. And they also uh, claim that they have a 35 amp maximum uh, output uh, and a continuous possible output of 20, mil uh, 20 amps um, which is quite high actually and unfortunately I don't have any equipment to test that I don't have any vaping equipment and that's what that is these cells are actually I believe designed to do is give you a high amperage uh, cell for vaping but um, unfortunately I don't have any equipment that can do that high an amperage in DC um, but what I will do is I will uh, take the wrapping off of one of these uh, lovely batteries they really look very well made uh, and they, by the way, are unprotected cells, so there's no protection circuit in them. They don't claim to be, have any protection in them, so I probably won't be destroying the cell all the way down, especially if it turns out to be, you know, a decent cell. And, uh, you know, uh, looking at the guts. So I'm going to test it for the uh, milliamp amp amperage storage capability, and uh, as you can see there, it says 3,000. Now, these are not cheap Chinese cells, as you can see. Two of them cost uh, 25 bucks or 24.99. So you know they're not your dollar 80 uh, Chinese 18650 cells. So I'm assuming that means that they're going to be legitimate cells. But the test will tell us all. So I'm going to take them, uh, look at the physical characteristics of them. You know the jacket, how it's made, also all of that, the uh, width, length, and weight. And after that, we're going to test the actual um, milliamp output. Uh, milliamp hour output from them using my lipo charger so here's the packaging these cells come in and uh, basically it matches exactly what was on the uh, website uh, on amazon for what it's supposed to look like so that's kind of cool it says uh unique please uh enter your unique identification number to verify so there's a verify verification uh, code on it uh, plus of course made in china and uh you know, the rest is pretty well self-explanatory. IMR 18650, 3000 milliamp hours. Of course, we're going to test that. So let's take it out of the package here. See what we get. There we go. And uh, just slide it out. And as you can see, a very attractive uh, cell. It's a, a, the EFEST, IMR 18650. We've got negative and a positive on the appropriate areas. And we have a flat top not a button top so if, if you don't have a equipment that uh, can actually make contact with that surface uh, it's not going to work for you so uh, you know it, you, like I said and they also claim I believe that you shouldn't stack these in other words they should be single uh, use only for uh, cells so basically one battery for one device so uh, there's our eFest scratch and check code now I'm not going to put that here I want to keep that uh, private uh, of course uh, the made in China, so at least they're honest about that. Let's look at the warnings and see what the spelling looks like. Go from there. You know, uh, do not use the battery. The battery, you know, wrappers damaged. Do, not use, do, you, do not use the battery if the battery's discharge current is not matched with your product. In other words, don't put a 3.7 volt uh, battery in a 1.5 volt uh, device. Do not keep your battery in your pocket purse or other. Uh, receptacle uh, con uh, containing metal objects uh, to avoid <laughs> to, okay sorry uh, to avoid short circuit so so far the English seems to be perfect battery may explode or catch f uh, fire if mistreated uh, do not disassemble puncture crush uh, cut sorry cut crush and short circuit incinerate exposed to water fire or high temperatures above 100 Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit so uh, unlike my other cells, uh, these people can actually uh, print English. So that's good. And uh, everything looks uh, fairly uh, solid on the battery. And um, as you could see, uh, I said it's got a flat top. It's got a really nice wrap on it. The wrap looks super professional. Uh, and the back has a flat back on it. Nothing special there. Uh, just a flat uh, a piece of metal there on the back. And again, as I said before, they do not claim to have any protection. So this is a bare uh, cell without any protection. So I don't feel the need to cut it open, uh, especially if it actually delivers on its 3000 milliamp hour uh, promise. So let's compare this to what I call my 
uh, benchmark the Panasonic 18650 NCR 18650B. This is a uh, you know ICR as it says 18650 3400 milliamp hour three volt cell. And uh, looking at the width, I would say they are identical in width and uh, length. Same thing again, I believe. Yes. And uh, this was a, a flat. The uh, the Panasonic was a flat top, but I put a little dab of solder on there just to make it a button top for myself. And uh, that worked out really well. And uh, as you can see, the length is exactly the same, um, you know, without, of course, the button top that I soldered on there. So uh, physically the same as in a 3,400 uh, milliamp hour cell. Let's see what the weight um, standards on that are or what, what the, the actual battery weighs. Okay, and the Panasonic NCR18650B weighs 45.9. Try that again. Yep, zeroed. Yeah, 45.9 uh, grams, or if we change that to ounces, 1.619 ounces. So uh, we'll compare that with this cell. And. Um, Back to grams, just to be fair. 45.7 grams, which, you know, regarding that this is a 3,000 milliamp hour cell and this is a uh, fourth, uh, sorry, 3,400 milliamp hour cell, uh, makes sense that it's a little lighter. Uh, there's no protection circuit in either one of them, so that's not a factor. And let's change it down to your ounces, and it's 1.608 ounces. So, uh, looks like more or less the right weight. Now I'm going to uh, test this uh, voltage on it to see what it is right out of the package. 3.66 volts. So, you know, not a, a decent charge right out of the package, but uh, I am going to fully charge it and fully discharge it uh, probably four or five times and then, uh, you know, uh, capture the last one and show you what my results are. I'm going to start off with the first cell, which is the, e the first EFES uh, cell that I tested. And... You know, as you can see here in the video, um, I've got a total of uh, 3,046 milliamp hours on it, discharged down to 2.51 volts. So it probably could have gone a little further, but an excellent result, uh, 3,046. That's over the 3,000 that's promised. Total time to discharge was three hours, five minutes, and 13 seconds. So let's go take a look at uh, you know the computer results, and here you can see the actual. Uh, program result and you can see that I got what it's saying 2.52 I don't know why um, maybe it's a program fault but it went down to 2.51 and uh, the end current was 0.23 amps at the very end so let's go take a look at the uh, actual uh, graphs here's the amperage graph for that cell as you can see it's a cycling through uh, one amp all the way down to the end here really not much to see there and then we're going to go to the uh, money shot this is the voltage curve and you can see that it, it uh, you know basically discharged quickly right down to about four four volts and then from there it stabilized out to a more or less a straight line to about oh three point three no actually no three point uh, yeah well about three point three five I would say a anyway a little bit more and then from there on it started uh, discharging uh, quicker uh, all the way down to 2.51 where it stopped. So, you know, what I learned from this curve is that really there's not much point, in, you know, in going over 4 volts. Uh, you get a little extra, not a lot. And, uh, you know, letting it discharge down to 2.50 doesn't seem to do anything to it, or 2.51 anyway. Uh, I've uh, charged and discharged this cell now about 10 times. This is about the 10th time. And same result. So, uh, working great here. Just wanted to show you that. Uh, next, uh, we're going to go to cell number two. And you'll see more or less almost exactly the same result. Uh, 347, sorry, 3047 milliamps, 3047 milliamps at 2.51. And uh, the total time was uh, three minutes, five, uh, sorry, three hours, five minutes, and 33 seconds. Let me break that back there. And again, an excellent result, more than was uh, advertised on the actual cell. So we actually got 
a Chinese built 18650 cell that delivers on what it's supposed to be for the charge. So let's move on to the next slide, which is the amperage. Um, again, uh, not much to see here. Went at one, one amp all the way through, all, almost to the end and where it just dropped off to nothing while it reached its destination or final result of 2.51. So let's go to the voltage. Uh, well, here's the uh, program um, result, the front page of it. Uh, again, it says 2.52. I don't know why. I got a program of 2.51, and the charger did go down to 2.51, 34. So it's 3047 milliamps. Again, you know exactly what you saw on the charger, so that's good. Um, again, you can see here put a steep curve down to about 4 volts, and then stabilizing out uh, down to about 3. Well, I'd say around here, 3.4. Uh, where it started accelerating downwards in discharge and then all the way down to 2.51. Again, excellent result. Excellent on the cell. It actually is delivering what it was promised. And, uh, you know, from a Chinese 18650, uh, it's uh, unusual, I would have to say, if you see my other videos. Uh, next, I'm going to rip the uh, actual uh, shrink wrap from around the cell off and have a look at it and it's going to make me cry because there's nothing wrong with this, these cells. They work great, but I promised you I was going to do this. So I'm going to show you what is under the wrapping. I'm not going to destroy the cell uh, down to the guts because it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I'm going to keep using the cell. Maybe I'll rewrap it and show that as well. But at this point, I'm just going to take the, uh, uh, you know, insulating cover off. I wanted to do one more discharge just as a test. Uh, this claims to have a high discharge rate of, of up to peak, I believe 35 amps. So the highest discharge rate I could set my charger to was five amps. So I did that and uh, I did a uh, you know full discharge of the battery to see what I would get. And here you can see my settings. Um, go to the next one here. And you can see where we start, we have the uh, amperage uh, chart uh, where it goes all the way up. But it only went up to two uh, amps of full discharge so i don't know why but basically that's where the charger uh, got to on the uh, full discharge of this battery and i'll show you the next image here and there's the actual full uh, amperage uh, chart and you can see that it went all the way up to two and then just dropped off uh, basically because the battery was fully discharged at that point but uh, i'll show you the voltage one next but Unfortunately, I couldn't get any higher than two amps on my uh, on my chargers. Let's go to the next one. And here's the full voltage uh, curve. And you can see it's pretty well a duplicate of the other curve, though it looks a little flatter because uh, it happened in half the time because I had twice the amount of amperage. I did a one amp discharge on the original test. This is a two amp, well, uh, it's supposed to be a five amp discharge, but the uh, charger only ever got up to uh, the maximum two amps. So you can see how that started at 1.2 here and went all the way up to 2 amps here. So uh, that's the um, <clears throat> high amperage discharge test or the highest amperage discharge test I could do on the battery. Uh, it still did well because if you look back at the original page, you see here I got 3056 milliamps. I actually did better with a higher amperage discharge rate uh, than I did with the 1 amp discharge rate. So excellent results again. I uh, just wanted to show you that as an, in, in addition to the two one amp uh, tests I did. Well, this is one of those situations where I hate myself for having done it, but uh, I took the actual wrapping off the EFES battery and there's just no printing or anything on the outside of it to indicate what it is. Uh, so really there's no real advantage to taking that off. It does have a little cap here, uh, insulating cap, so I'm going to carefully pry that off. because I want to put it back on and just peels off and you can see a cap here um, you know a little space underneath the actual uh, nub on it but nothing really special there and that's as far as I want to go with that um, I don't want to rip this apart and uh, cut it open to see what's inside because it's a perfectly uh, functional battery a cell and it works great and uh, I don't want to destroy it just to see what's inside because you know what there's no need to see what's inside 
it's already performing exactly as it's advertised as it should there is no protection circuitry in it at all so i'm just going to leave it alone at this point and uh maybe i'll rewrap it um you know but uh I'll, that'll be a separate video that's it for my review on the efas 3000 milliamp hour cell i have no problems at all recommending this cell to you uh, I've recharged it and discharged it about 10 times, each one of the cells, without any issue at all. Uh, if you want to want to buy one of these cells from the same people I bought it from, look in the video description below, and there'll be a link to Amazon where I bought these, and uh, then you'll be sure to get the, from the same uh, person I bought it from. Now, uh, they, they do have the um, sticker on them that allows you to verify that they're genuine on the uh, EFES site. I've done that. They are, and they actually deliver, so that's great. I actually found a, a cell from China that's 18650 that delivers on the milliamp hour uh, rating that they're, uh, you know, advertising. Excellent. Uh, I may in the future make a video on rewrapping this uh, puppy, the EFAS 3000 that I, I took the wrapping off of, uh, but that's in the future. Now, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button here in the bottom right hand corner and that'll uh, help my channel and my video uh, along and I appreciate that greatly. Also, if you want to see uh, further videos from me in the future, somewhere here on the screen you'll see a picture of me and that'll, uh, if you click on that, it'll subscribe you to my channel and that'll uh, allow you to see or get a no notification whenever I put out a new video. I've got many videos on chargers and uh, you know 18650 cells and uh, uh, batteries in general. Uh, if you want to check those out, uh, there'll probably be a link here on the screen as well. So once again, I want to thank you all for your time and for watching.